All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about measurement, now we need to talk about how measurement is limited with the topic of significant figures. So first of all, we need to understand what significant figures are and why they're important, and then we can talk about how to use them to figure out how to round our answers. So first of all, let's take a look at this picture over here to the left. How many oranges do you see? Well, hopefully everyone's seeing the same thing and you notice that there are five oranges. Now, is there any question that there are five oranges? Is this open to interpretation? Is this uh, debatable? I mean, unless you want to get really philosophical. Uh, no. The thing is, there are five oranges. Everyone would have come up with five. There's no guessing with that. And that's because we were counting. Anytime you're counting something, there is no room for ambiguity. It's, it's black and white, all or nothing. And so there are, there's no question that there are five oranges here. However, let's look at a different example. Let's take a look at this blue object here. And what if I asked you to measure its length? And specifically, I asked you to measure its length using three types of meter sticks that are shown below here. Now here's the thing. All you know about these meter sticks are each one of these three meter sticks shown is exactly one meter. Also, each meter stick is calibrated or marked differently. That's all we know. Okay, so now don't cheat. Let's measure the length of this blue object using first the first meter stick, then the second, and then finally the third. If I were to ask you to determine what the length is for this blue object using the first meter stick, here's the thing. All we know based on this meter stick is that this first line represents zero meters, and this line down here represents one meter. And that's it. We don't know anything about the calibrations or markings on the inside. So if you were to measure the length of this blue object, you'd have to do a little bit of guessing, right? And so if you take a look at this blue object, you'd say, okay, it's somewhere between zero and one. What are we thinking? Maybe 0 0.2, 1, 3, 7. I'm making things up, right? Because the thing is, all of these digits are guessed. I don't know any, I don't know for certain about any of these digits. So the rule when you're measuring something, for example with length, is you're only allowed to guess one digit. The moment we started guessing was the two. And so I have to stop there. And so the only measurement I can report is that this blue object is 0 0.2 meters. Because I'm not for sure that it's 0.2. Maybe it's 0.3. I'm guessing. This digit right here, the guess digit, is the digit of uncertainty. Okay, I'm not certain about that digit, and so that's as far as we can go. Now, if I were to measure this blue object using this second meter stick, I can see that this meter stick is not only at one meter, but it's equally divided into tenths. So this line is 0.1. This line is 0.2, this line is 0.3, and so on and so forth. So when I look at the length of this blue object using the second meter stick, when I write 0.2, this time I'm certain that it's at least 0.2, because the object is lying somewhere between 0.2 and 0.3. So now I'm certain about the 0.2. So I can keep going, right? I can now say, all right, 0.2 what? What are we thinking? Maybe 0 0.26, 0 0.27, 0 0.28. This is where we start to guess again. So I might report that it's 0.27 meters. But the 7 this time is the degree, the digit of uncertainty. So I have to make sure I re record digits until I guess one digit. So this time my measurement is a little bit more accurate because I was able to go out more digits. Finally, this last meter stick is even more calibrated. Not only am I certain that it's in between 0.2 and 0.3, but even between 0.2 and 0.3, it's divided into tens, or we would say it's the hundreds. So this is obviously where human error starts to come in because you have to like zoom in really close to see, okay, well, let's see, that line is landing right around, what is that, 0.21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right around 0.27. So maybe some people read that it's 0.271. Maybe some people read that it's 0.272. Maybe some people think that it's actually right on the 0.27.
But if that's the case, we still need to make sure that we put a zero indicating that we are recognizing it's right on that line. Because the thing is, if we don't add this zero, then we're saying that this measurement is the same accuracy as this measurement. And we know that's not true. We can see that this measuring device is not as accurate as this one. So to show that the third measuring stick is more accurate, we need to make sure that we record out to that third decimal place or that third digit. In this example, the third decimal place is the digit that we were guessing. That was our digit of uncertainty. But what I'm trying to show you is that when we were counting oranges, was there any question as to what value it was? No, counting is very black and white. But when we measure something, whether it be time, length, mass, volume, etc., measurements always have a certain limit. And significant figures is what helps us determine how accurate the measuring device was. In the example of the meter sticks, if I was a scientist looking at the following three measurements, I would conclude that whatever meter stick was used to measure the third was more accurate than the second or even the first. And so significant figures is going to help us determine how accurate our measurements are. So now that we know a little bit about what significant figures are and why they're important, let's talk a little bit more about how we can determine the correct number of significant figures. Reminder that when you are counting something, the number is exact. So five oranges or 12 donuts, even money is considered counting because we actually count out money. There's no question when you have $13.50. However, when you're measuring something, such as length in the previous example, the number is not exact. It's going to be dictated by how precise and accurate our measuring device was. So for example, when I see a mass of 1.453 grams, that has been limited by the accuracy of the device. When I see a volume of 2.75 liters, once again, that's been limited. That measurement has a certain limit based on whatever device was used to measure that. So significant figures, or sometimes we say significant digits, which are also abbreviated as sig figs, or sometimes even SF, is our representation of how certain or accurate a measurement is. Let's look at another example. So we looked at one example where we we're measuring length. What if you were asked to measure volume using a graduated cylinder? Let's use our same concepts that we learned with the measuring length to measure the volume of this graduated cylinder full of liquid. So if I were to ask you, what is the volume of liquid inside the graduated cylinder? I would wanna take a look at where the meniscus is. So the meniscus is that concave shape and you always wanna read from the bottom of the meniscus as is shown right here. Now we zoom in so it's a little bit easier for you to see, but what we would wanna do is we would wanna say, all right, what, what's the lowest calibration on the measuring device, all right? So if I take a look at this graduated cylinder, I can see that we have all these lines that are on the side of the graduated cylinder. Based on the numbers shown, what are the lines going up by? Well, if I take a look at here, 10 is here and 15 is there, my guess is each line is going up by one, such as this is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and so on. So each line is increasing by one. So for example, when I go and zoom in right here, if this is the 20 line, that means this line right here is 21, and this line right here is 22. And since the meniscus is right in between those two numbers, I know for certain that it's at least 21 milliliters. There's no guessing there. But 21 point what? In other words, the next digit I write would be guessed. Okay, it's estimated. So this is where we would have to say, all right, 21 point maybe six, 21.7, the six or the seven respectively, that's our digit of uncertainty. We are guessing the tenths place. That's as far out as we can go and as far out as we should go in our measurement. So would it be accurate to just say 21 milliliters? No, because we can guess one digit, but would it be fair or accurate to say, oh, 21.639 milliliters? No, because we've guessed too much. You are supposed to guess one digit and that's it. So some students might record 21.6, others might record 21.7, and that's okay, as long as the correct decimal place is represented, as well as as long as the measurement itself makes sense. 
For example, if a student were to look at this and say they think it's 21.2 milliliters, that's probably not as accurate. It looks like that meniscus is closer to the 21.6 or 21.7 region. But nevertheless, that is how we would measure uh, using significant figures. So a few rules when you're counting up how many significant figures that a number has. First rule, all non-zero digits are significant. So basically any number other than zero is a significant digit. So if I asked you how many significant figures does the number 1.5 have, the answer would be two. The number one and the number five are both significant. The, the issue comes in or challenge when they're zeros. So let's look at rule number two. Interior zeros are significant. What does that mean, interior zeros? Any zeros that are sandwiched between two non-zero numbers. So in the example of 1.05, this zero is in between the one and the five. They are always significant. What about, for example, this number right here, 20,200. All three of these zeros are in between two non-zero numbers. And so in that case, they're significant. So there would be five significant figures in this number right here. So that's just an example. All right, what about leading zeros? Leading zeros, or what I like to say is number zeros that start the number are never, ever, ever significant. Zeros that start the number are not significant. So in this number right here, these zeros that are at the beginning of the number are not significant. Now, obviously we have to have them there because if you just got rid of those zeros, now the number is 1050, which is a lot different than 0 0.001050, right? And so we have to have them there, but they're not going to count towards significant figures. And so in this number, these zeros are not significant, but the one, the zero in between, and the five, as well as the zero at the end are significant. And that's a little presumptuous because we need to know this last rule right here. The last rule that's written below here is that zeros that are at the end of a number without a written decimal point are ambiguous and should be avoided by using scientific notation. In other words, zeros that end a number, as long as there's a decimal, they are significant. If there's not a decimal, they are not significant. So for example, right here, these zeros end the number. But is there a decimal anywhere? No. And so since there's not a decimal, we would not count them as being significant. This number would actually have two significant figures. And what the rule is saying is probably 150,000 should have been written as scientific notation. And so that would be a more accurate way to represent that number rather than making it 150,000, which is pretty ambiguous. All right, so let's do some practice. Before we do practice, I wanna remind you that ex exact numbers, such as when we're counting, will never be dictated by significant figures. So exact numbers are numbers that are determined by counting, not measuring. And so we would never limit the number of significant figures in a calculation based on those numbers, such as there's exactly 12 eggs in a dozen, or exactly 100 centimeters in one meter. These are counting. And so they are not limited by sig figs. Okay, let's go through a few together and then we'll let you pause the video and try some on your own. All we wanna figure out here is how many significant figures each of these numbers have. So the first number right here, and I've no noticed I've left spaces in between. That's um, a common practice in science. You can imagine those spaces are filled with like a comma, but it helps you see um, visually where things are separated. But this first number is 1,003. Question is how many sig figs? There would be four significant figures, the one and the three, as well as the two zeros that are inside or in between. 209.50, that would be five significant figures. The two, nine, and five are all significant because they're not zero. The zero in between is always significant. And the zero that ends the number, it is significant as long as there's a decimal somewhere in the number. Go ahead and hit pause and then hit play to reveal the answers for the remaining numbers. All right, so make sure you record down these answers in your notes. One quick note about the last one. Notice in scientific notation, we only look at the coefficient to determine significant figures. 
We'll continue on with this lesson in the next video.